Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2017-2018 Teacher Workshop Series. Today we're going over number 25 on the new General Curriculum Math Subtest. This is a nice problem out there for elementary, middle school, and high school teachers because it's going to be talking about inverse relationships and inverse proportionality. So this is a new idea on the elementary school level, but very, very appropriate stuff for middle school and high school teachers. So let's start. First, we read it over to understand. At a constant temperature, the volume of a gas is inversely proportional to the pressure exerted on the gas. The volume of a certain gas sample is 12 cubic feet at a pressure of 1,000 millimeters of mercury. What will the volume of this gas sample be at a pressure of 600 millimeters of mercury if the temperature is kept constant? And then we have these options here. Now when you read this over, what is this? What is the central image? I want you to think about it. The central image. What are we talking about? Someone says, what was this problem about? Is it about temperature? Volume? Pressure? Usually the main anchoring idea is the word that's repeated more than any other word, like gas. We got gas here, and here, and here, and here. So let's just focus on this gas, like air. And what this is saying is if, if we keep the temperature of air, this air, constant, the volume of that air, it's inversely proportional to pressure. Inversely proportional is the big math idea in this problem. When two variables, like volume and air, and air pressure, are inversely proportional, as one increases, the other decreases. Now let's just map this out. Let's put this relationship in a chart. We think about volume and pressure here. We're told that at 12 cubic feet, air pressure is 1,000 millimeters of mercury. And then we're asked, what is the volume at 600? Now, if, if an inverse relationship says as one variable increases, the other decreases, or as one variable decreases, the other increases, and we look at this relationship here, what can you tell me about air pressure? Does it go up or down? Well, air pressure goes from 1,000 to 600, so it's going down. And that means that volume's going to go up because we're dealing with an inverse relationship. So it's going to be greater than 12. Which ones could we cross out? Cross out A. Now, how do we find out how much it goes up? Well, this involves inverse relationships. So let's just talk about inverse relationships by talking about direct relationships. Direct and inverse, because I think that's going to help. In direct relationships, we can express a direct relationship, something that uh, is directly proportional in this equation. y is equal to k times x. And you can think of this k almost like a constant or a rate. For example, the amount of money you make if you babysit is equal to the rate per hour you get paid times the number of hours. So if you work a lot of hours at a constant rate, you get more money. Is that right? That's a direct relationship. Now let's look at inverse relationships. The inverse relationship says y is inversely proportional to x. Now what does this mean? This is still a rate or a number. It's a constant. As x increases, y decreases. As this number in the denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this whole value gets smaller. Y gets smaller. Conversely, as x decreases, y is going to increase. We can use this inverse relationship to help us solve the problem. For example, in this problem, we know that volume is inversely proportional to air pressure. And we're told that when volume is 12 cubic feet, it's going to be K over a thousand millimeters of air pressure. Remember that K, think of that as a constant number. Now, if we want to find out what K is, in inverse relationships, this constant, this constant here is the product of X times Y. That equals our constant of proportionality for the inverse relationship. So in this one here, when we take our, our X times the Y, we do a thousand times 12. Let me just write that out, 1,000 1, times 12. 
we get a constant of proportionality of 12,000. We just figured out what that constant of proportionality is for this inverse relationship. Once we find out the constant of proportionality that's unique to these numbers here, we can substitute that back into our original uh, equation and we can answer what the volume is at 600 millimeters of air pressure. We do that by rewriting the equation out. Volume is equal to our constant of proportionality, which is this number that we calculated, over pressure. And it's going to be pressure at 600. What is the volume when air pressure is 600? Well, now we can do some division by factors of 10, we get 1,200 divided by 6. 6 goes into 12 two times, so 6 would go into 120 20 times. We just found out, team, that volume when air pressure is 600 is 20. This is a tricky problem. It's tricky because the scenario may be new. It's tricky because uh, there's a lot of moving parts. You definitely have to have an awareness of direct relationships and inverse relationships and an awareness of how to find that constant of proportionality and we've got to find that constant of proportionality by setting up the relationship one variable is inversely proportional to another find the product of the, of the x and the y to get that constant of proportionality then rewrite the problem with the constant of proportionality and the numbers that are given to try and find the missing values so there's, there's a lot going on here to get to B is 20. A good problem to look at, team. All right? All right, team. The answer here is B. If you are to research this, I'd like you to research direct relationships and then inverse relationships to have a better understanding of things that are inversely proportional. All right? Okay, team. This is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day, team. Bye-bye. Team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2017-2018 Teacher Workshop Series. This year we're holding workshops in math, science, English and history, early childhood education, foundations of reading, ESL and SEI. These are hands-on workshops designed to help teachers pass their teacher certification exams. I encourage you to check them out. We're holding them in Massachusetts, New York, North Carolina, California, New Hampshire, Vermont, Connecticut, and a couple other states. I encourage you to check out an upcoming workshop. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care.